a morning kiss from a thousand miles away, or a pet that never needs to be fed. These days, there are tons of gadgets designed to bring us closer together or even replace real-life social interactions. But can they really help against loneliness? That's our topic on Shift today. Everyone knows what it's like to be lonely. It's something we all have to go through at one point or another. But if someone's weekly social highlight is the interaction they have with a supermarket cashier, then something is missing. There are also many people who aren't physically able to just go out and meet others, like the elderly, or people who are sick or disabled. A Japanese man experienced social isolation firsthand when he was a child, and he decided to make it his mission to solve it. Dawn Cafe in Japan's capital, Tokyo, looks like an ordinary coffee shop. But alongside baristas and wait staff, there are robots working here too. Some are stationed at tables where they chat with customers, while others move around delivering orders. Customers who come to this cafe want to interact with the robots. And the ones here are special because they're not controlled by AI. They're the avatars of humans who are piloting them remotely. The avatar robots are equipped with a camera on their forehead, integrated speakers and microphones to enable their human pilots to interact with the customers. The pilots are people with disabilities or diseases which restrict them to working from home or from their hospital room. One is Maya, whose illness confines her to a wheelchair. Hunting for a job had been a painful experience until she found Dawn Cafe, says the 24-year-old. I had applied for many jobs after I finished university, but I didn't get any offers. It made me very sad and even depressed. I began thinking that I'd never be able to work. I was wondering what should I do when I came across this pilot position. It was amazing. For me, you could say it was my last hope. Today, I feel grateful when customers have a good time with me or when someone asks me when I'll be working next. It makes me happy to know that I'm helping people in some way. The social project was initiated by Kentaro Yoshifuji, the CEO of the startup Ori Lab. It was his own experience of loneliness that inspired him to start the business. Kentaro spent a number of years in hospitals as a child. I was away from school for three and a half years. I remember always wishing I had a second body. Because if I had another body, even if I was injured or hospitalized, then I could still participate in society, but in my second body. The rise of robots is often seen as a threat to our jobs, but Kentaro seeks to take advantage of the social potential of new technologies. We don't want to use artificial intelligence robots to make our work more efficient or to reduce the number of people, but rather to create ways we can work, even if we become bedridden or unable to move our bodies. Ray is visiting Dawn Cafe for the first time. She wasn't sure what to expect from the experience, but she quickly gets used to interacting with the robot avatars. I think it's a great project, and I hope we can use this as a starting point to expand on in the future. I think it's heartwarming to see the connections that have been made between people through robots. According to a nationwide survey on loneliness and isolation published earlier this year, some 40% of people in Japan, at least occasionally, feel lonely. 
At this cafe, robots help overcome social isolation, both for the pilots and for the customers. Dawn Cafe is a great example of how technology can help people connect, but experts warn it can also make us feel worse, especially social media. Dr. Anne Derimetz is a sociologist at Cologne's Institute for Social Research and Policy. We put the question to her whether digitalization is bringing us closer together or driving us further apart. Both. Digitalization can help against loneliness. We can find strangers to connect with online and talk about our common interests or troubles. It can help us feel affirmed or empowered because we no longer feel left alone with our worries or concerns or in terms of our preferences. But the online world can also make us feel more lonely. Repeatedly comparing yourself to others on social media can have a negative impact on self-esteem and people who predominantly cultivate digital friendships may develop problems with real-life friendships. When I'm online all the time, that can lead to me falling out of practice with real-world interactions. That can reinforce social anxieties, which in turn promote loneliness. There are AI-driven tools like Replica's chatbots that can help with loneliness. These are programmed to cheer up their users and check in regularly. But we shouldn't get too reliant on them, says Dr. Anna Derimitz. Regularly communicating with real people is vital. What digital technology hasn't been able to replace, and this is very important, is interpersonal haptic touch, physical contact such as touching, hugging and so on. That raises the question of whether technology should imitate human physical contact or even try to replace it. Personally, I would always argue for strengthening real-world interpersonal contact. Everyone needs physical contact, but not everyone has the same level of access to it. Lack of physical contact is something people in long-distance relationships often struggle with. I mean, no video call can replace a kiss, right? And it's not always possible to just hop on the train and visit your partner. But now there's a device that could help. Silicon lips. This pair of synthetic lips can bring your partner's kiss to you. The idea was born during the COVID-19 lockdowns in China. Long lost touch simulates your partner's lip movements from afar. Essentially, people will find the space and time again for emotional communication. That's the best part. Just like the invention of WeChat or even the telephone, it doesn't isolate people from one another. It makes people communicate more frequently and at a lower cost, too. To use the device, users pair two of the lip-shaped machines and plug them into the charging ports of their smartphones, which they then use to video call. It records users' kiss data through motion sensors and sends it to the paired device. It even warms up slightly as the user kisses, giving it a more authentic touch. On the streets of Beijing, opinions on the silicon lips differ. I think it's unnecessary. You could get addicted to it. It's great. It's not some perverse toy. It's for private use, so there's no problem. The device costs the equivalent of 35 euros. And in China, there's a demand for the fake lips. In the first two weeks after release, at least 3,000 devices were bought and 20,000 pre-ordered. Robots designed to serve as friends or companions are especially popular in Japan. One of them is Lovat from the words love and robot. Lovat has googly eyes, is warm to touch and makes cute sounds like this. It's also pretty smart. Cameras and sensors give it 360-degree vision, autonomous movement and allow it to distinguish people from objects via thermal imaging. But will robots really be the pets of the future? In Japan, these little guys have caused quite the stir. Meet Lovat, a robot program for companionship. Since its launch in 2019, 10,000 of them have been sold in the country. Lovat uses 50 sensors to gauge its owner's mood. It learns from people's behavior, similar to how a pet would. It's a therapeutical robot, much like an emotional support animal. But can robots replace real pets? 
or even humans? At Tokyo's Meiji University, Professor Takanori Komatsu studies how humans interact with various artifacts. As robots become more common, he's analyzing how our relationship to them is evolving. So many decades ago, the robots are, have been appearing on the very famous the manga or comics. Then there are so many people who got familiar about the robots. Then the, the easy solution is, oh, OK, try to create a clever robot and apply to the, uh, our daily life to resolve the social issue. Social issues like an aging society and a lack of workers. In a recent survey, Professor Kamatsu asked people in Japan and the US how they would use robots in situations which separate us from our loved ones, like the pandemic. Results underline a higher affinity to robots in Japan. US people want to use a robot just as a tool to communicate with their families because they themselves want to contact with their families. But the Japanese participants say that they want to use a robot that instead of them. But a robot dog or cat isn't like the real thing. And generally, the robots of today fall short of what we've seen in films or cartoons. These robots are the humanoid robot, or they're kind of the very the perfect robots. That, that robot can do everything. That, that robot can work in the houseworks, and also they can do the homework instead of the student or something like that. One. But the current technology level of the robot is not really high. Then that so many people are they notice, oh, the robot is not really good the, compared to the our imagination. Then there's so many people who are easily disappointed with the robot. Would you want a lover in your life? Personally, I'd go for a real dog, even if that does mean cleaning up after it. It's great that we have robotic pets, chatbots or chat rooms to help us connect and combat loneliness. But we clearly need to find the right balance. The goal should be to connect virtually and in real life, because even the smartest tool can't completely replace human interaction. What do you think? Can tech ever really cure loneliness? Or should we be prioritizing something else? Let us know by writing in. Thanks for watching and see you next time.